That's why I think it was such a shock to me to read that sort of stat. So I'm, I'll look into it more uh, as well. Um, do you remember that, that Ricky Morty example you gave in the book enough to, to retell? I don't it? remember it, no, because I, I haven't gone through the book in a couple months. Okay, because I hope I don't butcher it. So I think one was it was using the, the characters from the show more or less that Rick is a bit of a catastrophizer. He's always preparing. He also has always has some sort of gadget if someone from a different planet comes to attack him. His whole life is spent worrying about what, what could happen next. And Morty is just living his life, having a good time, doing whatever, like kind of he's, he's more on, on clock time. And if I remember correctly, I believe what your point was like, well, who's living the, the better life? And you're like, it doesn't matter. Like they're, yeah. they're both living their own lives, having different levels of, of happiness and, and success. And I, I think of the, along the lines is that like they're creating their own reality and their and, and what their happiness level is. Is that? More yeah, no, that yeah, that that's right. Um, I mean, what, what I was kind of doing there is is leading people down a bit of a trap to think, oh, well, if you live in clock time, that's way better. Like he, he's obviously has a better life, but it, we can't say that. Like we, we do have to acknowledge and appreciate that people choose their own past. And so if they have the knowledge and the awareness of self to choose a path that, that helps create more quiet time for them, which I think should be a goal for most people, then it, it, how the path looks to get you to that point doesn't really matter that much. Right. That's great. I, I really, really enjoy that. So how would you sum up quiet mind? Like if someone's trying to get their mind to be more quiet, like what are the elements that they could uh, engage in to help them? So quiet mind is the phenomenon of being fully present in your moment to the degree that the only thoughts and experiences you're having are related to that moment. Uh, I told you earlier that if a person went for a 20 minute coffee with a really close friend and they're catching up and they're just so engaged in that moment for that period of time, that to me is a classic example of quiet mind. That, but you know, the 20 minutes goes by and they think they, they've only just started, like it's been a minute. Like the, the experience of quiet mind is that you're so involved in your moment that you lose perspective on, on time and other things around you like that. That is an experience that a lot of us don't have on a regular basis and that we should. And it, I, you can find it in those four things. So in relationships, you have those, those moments where you're, especially in newer relationships where you lose track of time. You're just so interested in the other person and, and happy with the interactions that you're, nothing else matters. Uh, people that regularly engage in exercise sometimes report that same kind of phenomenon that when they get into a really good workout, that they're just so involved they're and, you know, they're, they're, uh, aware of their own workout, their muscles, et cetera, that they, they lose track of other things around them. Those are great experiences to have. And the nature bathing, for example, or like I said, working on a puzzle, listening to a, an audio book. There's lots of experiences that can give you that sensation of quiet mind, but it all boils down to being fully present in the now, as Eckhart Tolle would say, or, or being fully mindful. That's a big movement in psychology is talking about mindfulness. Uh, that's essentially the experience of quiet mind. Okay, that's great. I want to be respectful 